One thing is definitely for sure, Steve Krauss come a long way from Evan Almighty. That's a fact. So Fox catches the critically acclaimed film, it stars Steve Carell, Channing Tatum, and Mark Ruffalo. Steve Carell is kind of a huge wrestling enthusiast and he's like really really rich and he invites Channing Tatum's character who's like an Olympic gold wrestling medalist but he's kind of living in the shadow of his brother played by Mark Ruffalo. So basically the story of this film is that Steve Carell is training Channing Tatum's character to get a gold medal in the 1988 Olympic Games. But as you could tell from the trailer, that's pretty much not all that's going on. I'm not going to spoil anything for you, no, I have a spoiler free policy on my channel, don't you worry. Going into this film, I was sure it was going to be overhyped. I was like, okay, it's just going to be another another really artsy, Oscar hopping for Golden Globe winning thing that a lot of people have been really behind, but I just thought it was going to be like a really boring uh, biographical drama film. And, for some parts it is, I will admit that, I do think it was overhyped a little bit, I don't think it was completely overhyped, I just think it is, on the whole, just a little bit overhyped, but I, there were still a lot of good things about the film. Which I've got to say right now, the three main guys in this movie, they just steal it. Steve Carell, Channing Tatum, and Mark Ruffalo, Mark Ruffalo are really good in the film, and there were times I was like, is that actually Mark Ruffalo, because of all the, the hair and makeup and stuff, I couldn't actually say, was that Mark Ruffalo? But it was, don't worry. And Channing Tatum was good, I mean, this is his best role behind Jump Street, which is not really saying much, but he is really good in this film, I mean like, when he's serious, he can actually be really good, which is what I've noticed about like comedy films like Jump Street and like the interview movies and stuff, like this is the end, when the actors in those kind of films do serious roles, they're actually really good actors, which I'm not saying they should stop doing the comedy films, I'm just saying they should do more serious stuff. But yeah, Channing Tatum was really good in this film as the brother living in the other brother's shadow. Just like everyone who's seen the film, my favourite performance was Steve Carell. Steve Carell is really creepy. I mean, I mean, he always had the same expression on his face like that. Or like, I can't do his expression, but it was like, he talked really funny as well. He was like, coach should be a mentor, father, and guidance or something like that. He just, he talked really weird, but I think this is definitely Steve Carell's very best role. I mean, like... I mean, I couldn't, I could hardly believe my eyes when I was like, is that Steve Carell? Because I'm, I'm used to him being in these comedy films like, you know, 40 year old virgin, Evan Almighty and things like that. Where he's like the bumbling idiot or something, or breaking Anchorman. I just didn't know he was capable of this kind of stuff, and I think he's been nominated for, I think, is it Best Supporting Actor at Golden Globes or something? I don't know, it's either Best Supporting Actor or Best Actor or something like that. I hope he does win, I, really, I think he really does deserve it. But one thing I also credit this film for is the soundtrack, the score, it's really, really eerie because it's like the soundtrack throughout the film is like really eerie piano kind of music like when people, when they're training in the wrestling gym and stuff, it's like really eerie piano music I was like, yeah, something creepy is definitely going on on this, uh, this fox catcher farm so props to that So in the end, it did have a few boring parts like there were parts of the film like, okay, come on, let's get something happening but the film was powered on by the performances from the three guys Mark Ruffalo, Channing Tatum, and Steve Carell they were all great in this film, they're actually really, really good performances the, the soundtrack was eerie, the whole tone of the film was just straight up eerie and it was, um, even though nothing was happening, it was still intense, which is very weird because nothing was happening, but it was still intense because you know, you know, it was building up to something that was going to happen, so it had really good build up. And was it worth the build up? Kind of, yeah. Um, it's a true story as well, it's quite shocking. I was like, my god, it's a true story. I forgot all about it until the end where it shows the epilogue thing, so yeah. <laughs> Under my new rating system, I will give Foxcatcher a 3 out of 5. But I say Foxcatcher's worth checking out, yeah, I will check, yeah, check it out, but I'm not sure you'd go, I'd say, go to the cinema to watch it, but yeah, it is worth checking out because it's been nominated for Golden Globes and maybe even nominated for some Oscars, maybe, I don't know. But anyway, have you seen Foxcatcher and what did you think about it? Whatever you thought, comment below and click right here to see more.